you walk into a McWinder King's, a chain of family adjacent restaurants. They are as widespread as they are identical. Even in the smallest of towns with the quietest of townsfolk, you'll be greeted by the faint glow of that blue neon sign with the signature blood red crescent moon C just off center. With so many convenient locations across the globe, you would assume that McWinder King's was the undisputed top dog in the fast food service industry. And yet, you've never seen a commercial, a billboard, an advertisement of any kind. In fact, you sometimes forget what a McWinder King's restaurant looks like, or how the food tastes, or if you've ever been to one before in your life. You may even struggle to picture McWinder King's in your mind at all. But just when the idea has almost faded, just when the name McWinder King's finally begins to loosen its grip on your tongue's tip, you feel the cool blue of neon on your neck and the sharp burn of the blood red crescent resting just off your spine. You turn around and suddenly you are washed with the knowledge of what's for dinner. You walk into a McWinder King's. Hello everyone, it's another episode of your favorite fast food supernatural weird thing podcast. Do you think there are any other supernatural weird thing podcasts? Probably, but none about fast food. So no. Yeah, no. Okay. If you know of another one, let us know because we don't know any between the two of us. We could be fast food supernatural show friends. Or it could be like a rivalry between those two companies that we won't mention. But you know the ones we're thinking about. Indeed. But they have a, a different amalgam of names. Shh. <laughs> we're giving away trade secrets. Welcome back, everybody, to You Walk Into a McWinder Kings. The only fast food supernatural weird stuff podcast apparently on the whole internet. Yeah. I'm your shift manager, Sam. I'm your terrified customer, Jonathan. And if this is your first time coming in, well... Okay. Hi. Welcome. Have a seat. You look tired. Have you? If, you've been drinking enough water today, right? We got a cup of tea sitting on the counter in here. If you wanna. No. Okay. Well, it'll still be there. No. We we can heat you up another one. We'll keep the pot on the kettle for you. Or kettle on the burner, I meant to say. Mm. Well, well, you know, we'll just keep a pot going. Coffee too. You you can take a bit. Yeah. Just don't sit there. No. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Actually, where you're sitting, if you could move one seat over. Okay. Yeah, right there. That's fine. And you know how you're doing that thing with your headphones that it goes, like, over the ear? Don't do that. That's that's a bad. Yeah, that was just a thing the internet came up with. That's not really how headphones work. You just look silly. But yeah. Wear normal. It doesn't go. make your headphones last longer. Or it's not how they're meant to be heard. Like, come on. <laughs> Have we alienated enough people to where you think we can... <laughs> Get going now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As always, Jonathan, your mission is to walk into a McWinder King's, get mm. your food, eat your food, walk out. That sounds like a fun, and I also might die. That that has happened. Indeed. Recently. I really hope that, that somewhere in the future someone's listening to this and they accidentally skipped ahead and they were trying to find their spot and it spoiled the ending of the last episode. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Who saw that twist coming? All right, let's get into it. <clears throat> Maybe they should just put it all on shuffle. <laughs> oh, man, what kind of story would that tell? That'd be interesting. Part ones and part twos all shuffled together? Yeah. Man, that would be just uncomprehensible. <laughs> <laughs> I would like it. I'd like to see, like, the different versions of Jonathan meet up. I'd like Fruit Punch Jonathan and Root Beer Jonathan to switch places for two seconds and see what happens. Did you call it? If you choose to listen to the podcast on Shuffle, tell us what narrative you came up with. And if you play it along with Dark Side of the Moon, who does it tell you to go after? <laughs> <laughs> what secret messages are hidden there? Truly. One of the episodes lines up, but we won't tell you which one. Is there one? <laughs> Of course not. Wink. So, what what am I doing in this episode? You're probably getting very mad at me. Okay. 
You ready to get started? Yeah, I'm ready to get started. All right. <clears throat> you walk into a McWender King's. You are greeted with fields of corn as far as the eye can see. Oh, jeez. There are no walls. You feel a cool autumn breeze blow against your skin. As you turn around to look at the door, you realize it's a door frame in the middle of a cornfield. And the only signs of life is music playing in the distance. Hmm. What would you like to do? I guess go to the music. You want to follow the music. Indeed. You begin walking toward the music and realize that it isn't getting any louder. Maybe you're going the wrong direction. I guess. Walk in the opposite direction? You walk back, you find the door again. Okay. Do we... I go through the door? You walk through the door. You're still in the cornfield. Huh. It just leaves a door frame around. Where's the music? <laughs> Playing in the distance. <laughs> I guess the... What if I run as far as away, as away from the music as I can? Okay, you want to do that? Yeah. How long do you want to run for? Uh... Let's run for, like, five minutes. Okay, you run five minutes away from the music. You can't hear it anymore. Ah, oh, darn it. I guess i got to walk towards it again. So you take ten minutes to walk back. This adventure has been delayed 20 <laughs> minutes. And you still hear that same music, though the song may have switched in this time. You're not entirely sure. Okay, and it's closer... It's the exact same distance it was when you started. Gosh darn. You're currently standing at the door again. Where is this music coming from? Gosh darn it. <laughs> you want to shout that out into the cornfield? Sure. You shout out in dismay into the cornfield and hear a voice respond. Well, hello? Hello, who's out there? A very confused and angry man. Where is this music? <laughs> oh. Well, hold on. What what's around you other than corn? What do you see? A door frame. A door what? Yes, a door frame. Well, I was thinking like a tree or something, but as you are having this conversation, a uh, young girl appears from between rows of corn. I wasn't expect. Oh my gosh! Well, there is a door frame. Hmm. So well, hi there, stranger. Hi. Uh, do you know why there's a door frame in your cornfield? Well, not to be too impolite, but I assume by my shocked expression you could have figured out that I don't know why that's there. Yeah. I know Pa didn't put it out here. I thought well, it could have been, been a thing of just like, oh, shoot, my door frame's here. Well, we don't have any fancy glass doors like that. That's uh, a little different. Class? Looks like looks like it came off one of the shops from in town. Nah, can I click my heels twice and then go back? You ask a lot of questions that I would not have the answer to, stranger. Hmm. And not even have it introduced yourself. Hi, I'm Jonathan. Hi there, Jonathan. My name's Abigail Sanders. You Wonderful. can call me Abby. Nice to meet you. So, I'm in a cornfield. You are. What is this cornfield? Well, you're on my family's land right now, and that music you were referencing, I imagine it's a harvest festival going on downhill. Ah, that sounds fun. Oh, yeah, it's a time and a half. The whole community comes together, and there's games and prizes, and there's a karaoke in the big red bar, and it's all very fun. Hmm. All righty. If you want to come on down, I can show you around. Sure. Cool. So, Abby begins to walk... Down the hill. That's the motorcycle starts in the distance. Yay! <laughs> <coughs> it's never an episode of McWenna Kings without the motorcycle. <clears throat> so, Abby begins to walk down the hill, and the music's getting louder as you come down this hill that winds 
to the left, corn on either sides of you. You are vi opened up to a dirt path, and following that dirt path leads to a straightaway where at the end is a big red barn, and there's a whole harvest festival going on around you with booths and people and balloons and smells of different food all around. Mm. And everyone seems to be just coming together to have a good old time. Okay. So, what is this Harvest Festival for besides, well, I guess, Harvest? Oh, just everybody in the community coming around, getting together, having some fun. Hmm. How long has it been going on? Oh, gosh. Uh, as long as we've been here. So... Ten? Fifteen? Yeah. Interesting. Maybe longer. I don't hmm. think longer, though. Well, who knows? I wasn't here. But the whole thing's a hoot and a half. If you want to go down, we can get you invested. We got a competition going if you'd like to enter that. What's the competition? Well, we got six booze down there. And each one of them, if you compete in their game or their event or whatever the case may be and you win, you're going to get a prize ticket. All right. And if you collect enough prize tickets at the end of the festival, whoever has the most gets to win well whatever the prize is for this year whatever the mayor selected hmm. I think this year it's some kind of gourmet burger or something gourmet burger yep uh, I think he called it the golden harvest burger something about it having gold wheat and like gold leaf in it. I don't know yeah. I'm not much for competition myself but it's like a lot of fun to try to play different games see how far you can get but you can get tickets for that. You can get it for the karaoke that's going on on the main stage. You can get it for the costume contest. Hmm. Sure. Let's compete. All right. Well, let's be interesting. I didn't have much plans for today other than to mosey around the fair, so it'll be interesting to see if you can compete with our local talents, as it were. Okay. They're going to lose. You said they're going to lose? Yes. Okay, well, I like the confidence, stranger. Uh, we got three on either side, just going up the strips, you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, you just go to the tents, talk to the folks that are there, and they'll help you out. Alrighty. There's no order or anything you got to do with me. You just got to do what you want. Okay. Not a very strict community. Indeed. Like the, the lack of structure. Well, it's structured. But the free flow nature of everything. Indeed. It's a lot of fun. Just a time to relax, put your feet up, metaphorically speaking. Indeed. I wouldn't re recommend putting your feet up on anybody's boo. That just kind of seems like disrespectful. Hmm. So, Jonathan, you've been presented with the Harvest Festival. You have hmm. six booths to choose from. Hopefully you have on a costume. Ah. Did I have to, like, have a costume? Do you have one in mind? Count Dunkla. Describe it for me. Do you call it basketball? Do you call it on a black jersey? Uh huh. Do you call it black black cape with the popped out collar? Uh huh. Do you call it gold chain? Okay. Do you call it with the with the Dracula haircut? Okay. Hey, thanks. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna just have you roll. <laughs> just. And as high as the number, that's as good as your costume is, okay? <laughs> yeah. So you've told me what you wanted. Go ahead, roll, see how good your costume is. I hope it's a 20. <laughs> I hope it's a 22. I'd love that for you. 13. 13. So you've got, like, iron-on on the jersey. Mm -hmm. And, like, the, hair, the haircut's fine. But, like, your fangs aren't as good as they could be. Like, the little plastic ones not like the dollar store ones but like yeah. the ones you buy at like a halloween pop-up store okay uh your cape's fine again I, I feel like you bought a uh dracula costume from spirit halloween and just kind of added to it okay so yeah. it, it's all right like what's, it's, it's what's the chain <laughs> uh is it gonna turn my neck green <laughs> 
No, I, I don't I don't think it's plastic either. I think the chain you're like, yeah, you know what? If I'm gonna do one thing right, it's gonna be that. So okay. you got so you went all out on the chain and then just kinda put together the rest of the stuff you had. Mm-hmm. They ain't half a basketball. <laughs> what? They ain't half a basketball. Uh on a 13, you've got, like, the, one of the little kid ones. Okay. Like, it's got, like, I don't know, some cartoon character on it, and it's, like, faded. All right. So you've got one, technically, but you're not playing any league games with it. <laughs> Fair enough. That is all I wanted. Okay. So, yeah, you are, was it Count Duncula? Yeah, Count Duncula. Okay. So that is your costume. That you just walked in and happened to have on. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So, you have six boos to choose from. Alright, so give me the boost again. Okay, so, I am giving you the first time. Uh, the first one, you see what looks to be a test of strength. Alright. And it's uh, the classic big mallet hammer deal. Sledgehammer, really. Uh with the bell that you've got to ring that's real high up. Mm-hmm. And then it's got, like, the fun little markings on different... It's so, like, the lower it is, the more insulting it is, that kind of thing. Yeah. But it's nothing mean. Like, the bottom one's wimpy, so it's not like they're... It's it's a family kind of thing, so it's kind of fun. Uh, the one next to that is... Uh, well, it looks to be bobbing for... It looks like they've got lettuce in there. So it's like a pool with heads of lettuce in there. Mm, that sounds not great. I mean, it seems pretty, like, standard. It's just the the metal tubs, and there's, like, four of them in a row, and each of them have, like, little pools of water with some lettuce in it. So it's like, all right, I guess they grow lettuce here. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, the last one on that end is a fishbowl throw, mm-hmm. where you have all the little uh, tiny goldfish uh, bowls, and you throw the little ping pong balls in there. Okay. And the opposite side... You have, uh, leading up, you have the dunk tank, where it's just a guy in a dunk tank hanging out. Uh, it seems to be some sort of green substance, or maybe they colored some water or got something from a lake, I don't know. Mm. Uh, but it's filling the, uh, tank that he's in. It's got the big target that you gotta hit, but the target's shaped, uh, kind of like a pumpkin, like painted, like one just, I guess, be kind of festive. It's fun looking. Um... Let's see. Next to that, we have what looks to be some sort of shooting gallery. Hmm. It looks like people are sitting at little mounted guns shooting some sort of liquid at a target, and it's filling up little balloons or what we think are balloons. I don't know. We'd have to get closer to see. And then at the end of that opposite row on the right-hand side, you have uh, what looks to be axe throwing. Hmm. So it's just a... uh, booth that has a counter with a bunch of axes just kind of sticking out of it and it looks like there's just a tented off kind of area for safety where you can't really see inside but you imagine that's where the targets are okay so yeah those are your options hmm. and of course there's the main stage at the barn for like karaoke stuff that will be going on later but no one's on it right now okay so do uh, Abby, do i do i get anything from these things from the games? Yeah. Yeah. You you play. If you win, you get the prize ticket for the booth. Okay. All right. They got a limited number, though, so. Hmm. I imagine if you got all those, won the costume contest and karaoke, that'd be eight. Okay. That'd be a heck of a lot. Indeed. Eight be your highest score. All right. So if you were really ambitious wanting to complete everything. Okay. Let's go to the dunk tanks. Okay. So, uh, you and Abby walk down the hill and choose the second booth on the, or the first booth on the right-hand side there. And there's a man sitting in the dunk tank. And he looks to you and Abby and he says, Howdy there, Miss Sanders. How are you doing today? And she's up. She says, Oh, I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Mr. Johnson? And he says, Well, I'm doing right fine. Volunteer to be in this here dunk booth. I don't know what happened to the last guy that was doing it. 
think it was Wally Peterson, and he just seemed to slip out on us. Hmm. But anyway, if you want to play, you can go ahead. We got three balls, Dane. You hit that there target and try to sink me into this here liquid. Hmm. I don't know what this is. It's green. How's y'all's water supply down here? You're not <laughs> pouring out green water, are you? And Abby says, well, no, sir, we're not pouring out green. We're running clear as anybody else. We got city water down here. What's in the tank? It looks like your guess is as good as his at this point. I know we aren't running anything like that through our line, so... Mm. Maybe it's well water? Mm. <laughs> It's all right, though. You go ahead. You yeah, sure, guy? <laughs> I was very determined to to knock you in, but now I'm not so sure. I mean, I can do that thing where I antagonize you into throwing if you want. Uh, well, will that make you feel better about it? I, I don't. I got. I got my swim costume on. I'm all right. Okay, if you're all right, falling into the green, the ooze. I mean, it doesn't look viscous. It looks all right. Okay, so so no. No ninja power. I don't get your reference, but... Don't worry, it's, it's fine. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know it's gonna be three dice rolls. <laughs> three yeah, I, I know. Yeah. But what'd you call it? Just like... <laughs> I, I've actually... <laughs> there was just like, yeah, we're, I'm go you're going down to... <laughs> Uh, you can come back if you want. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, well, no, no, no. We're here. Uh, I'll, if you want to walk around a bit, y'all just get here. Yeah, we just got here. Yeah, y'all y'all can walk around and come back if you want. I don't mind. I'll sit up here, get a little more sun on me. Okay. I've only been here a minute, so I can get a little warm before I take a cool dip. I don't want you to fall off that green coot, man. Well, take your time. Your call, friend. Okay. Yeah, wait, let's let's go to the hammer strike. I I feel more <laughs> attacking his energy from that. <laughs> All right. Well, Abby, tell your Paul hi for me if I don't see him. Yes, sir, I will. And you and Abby walk away from the booth. <laughs> I'm very concerned for that man. <laughs> <laughs> I like that I didn't have to give anything like his life's in danger in any way. It's just slightly green water. <laughs> but all right, you walk away. And uh, you walk up to the test of strength where you have your cartoonishly oversized mallet and a man standing there. <clears throat> and he has his, what you realize now is probably 10, 15 feet up signpost there. Oh. And it's got a weight on the bottom. Pretty standard. Mm -hmm. He walks up and he says, well, hat of there. Uh -huh. You want to test your strength and press the little lady? I will impress all and totally smash through the ceiling of that well it ain't got a ceiling to it but i like your idea the bell thing <laughs> it does got one of them yeah i'll do that well all right so uh what you're gonna need to do here you're gonna pick up that there mallet go ahead do that for me so i right. make sure that you can actually play the game so five or higher to lift the mallet Eight. Okay, so you pick up the mallet, no problem. All right, so you're at least under the weight requirement there. That's wonderful. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a step back. You're going to take your step forward, swing down, and see how high you can get her. Okay. All right, so how do you want to do this? Explain your process to me. All right. I'm going to... Um... Lunge back and then, what do you call it, strike down. Okay. Kind of, like, throw my whole, like... So back... put your whole weight behind it? Yeah, back oh. weight. So, what do you call it, like, I'm propelling myself forward. Okay, so, like, self-propelling and putting your whole weight behind it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's just do an out of 20. Yeah, let's just see what you get out of 20. A little different. Okay. 18. 18. So I'm going to say that it shoots right up there, hits the bell, the bell lets out a ding, and everybody that's around just kind of goes, yeah, it claps for you. Everybody's happy. And uh, 
man comes up and says, well, all right, all right. That's a good start right there. What you, what you mean? Well, this is the test of strength boost, son. Okay. That was the motivator, the warm-up to get you all feeling all strong and confident. All right. Now we're up to the test part. Okay. And as he says that, uh, he kind of gestures behind the table and a little boy walks out behind it and is now standing in front of you and says, all right, your test is, and he covers the little boy's ears, tell my son I can't afford to put him through art school. What? (laughs) Are you strong enough to tell my child that he cannot fulfill his dreams because of his father's impoverished nature? I would have an easier time just punching the child. And then he takes the hands off uh, his ear, his son's ears and says, Well, don't do that now. <laughs> That's All right. right, test of strength. Mm. <laughs> I, <laughs> Hey, man. <laughs> Are you talking to... I'm, I'm talking to the child. <laughs> oh, hiya, mister. Hey, buddy. My name's Little Timmy. What's your name? My, my name is Count Duncula. Hi, Count Duncula. Yeah. I like your fangs. I thank you. Now, oh, I'm dressed up as a pirate. Wonderful. And, you know, you, you could probably go grow up and be a pirate. You can go... Oh, no, well, that'd be wrong. Pirates like to take from people and steal, and I don't want to hurt anybody. Ah, so, so what do you... So, what do you want to do? I like... I like building stuff and making things with my paw and drawing and uh, don't tell anybody, mister, but I liked helping my mama come up with this costume. That was a lot of fun. Hmm. She put it together herself. She got a bunch of scrap fabrics and she made me a little vest and the peg legs part of an old kitchen table we used to have that broke. Yeah. But that was a lot of fun too, so I, I got kind of like doing that, but I don't want you to tell anybody. I don't want them to think that I'm into that kind of sissy stuff, you know? Oh, man. Did you call it? You don't have to worry about that. Really? Yeah. So, it's okay for boys to like making costumes? Oh, yeah. Oh. But you know it's not okay? What? Go into art school because you can't afford it! Get dumped on! (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah, you probably broke <laughs> daddy what's art school <laughs> you'll never find out <laughs> don't even ask Ta- There's a- give me a challenge sir <laughs> what you want from me you think i'm gonna fold <laughs> <laughs> and the kids just cry <laughs> because cow don't kill us yelling at him <laughs> And he just looks to his dad. He says, Pa, what's art school? Why is he yelling? I thought he was a friend, but he's so mean. (laughs) All hell, Count Tokula. Well, geez, mister, I said tell him. I didn't say make him cry. All right, well. Boy, you did your job. Thank you. Don't worry about art school. It's not a real thing. (laughs) The boy sniffs and just kind of nods and walks away thinking he had made a friend when really a man just yelled at him. <laughs> well, I gotta hand it to you there, Mr. Count. Uh, you sure did rise to the challenge of strength. <laughs> Give me an actual challenge. Uh, that's all I got. All right. I got a ticket for you. I'll take that. I could give you a second challenge to get my kid to stop crying, but <laughs> I don't feel like I feel like that bridge is a uh, yeah it might burn. <laughs> Wouldn't call that exactly stable ground. So uh, Sorry, there you man. go. <laughs> and he hands you a red ticket that has a bicep on it, Whoa. and in a gold letter it says "Challenge of Strength." So it's like, oh, this is kind of fancy. It's like a little uh, mini certificate, hmm. about the size of a small business card. Okay. Hey, kid, follow your dreams as long as you're not art school. And the kid's just crying <laughs> like he's unconsolable. <laughs> well, uh, mission accomplished? <laughs> I want to 
dribble my my small basketball across, across my legs. I don't want it to bounce. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, it's not gonna bounce. I just, I just want to do it. All right, so you're doing that, and uh, Abby's looking at you, kind of concerned, and the father looks back and says, "Abby, this is a friend of yours." And she says, "I'm starting to wonder." New acquaintance, but the jury's still out, I reckon. <laughs> okay. Next so challenge. you've taunted a small child. Yeah. You still have the dunk tank, the bobbing for lettuce, the fishbowl throw, the shooting gallery, and axe throwing. Okay. Uh, hmm. I can... Let's, let's go for, for the axe throw. So you're going to go to the axe throw? Mm-hmm. And you walk up, and there is a teenager standing there, and he's uh, throwing the axes. And you hear a loud thud, but uh, his friends around him that are kind of watching are just kind of unimpressed, give him a hard time, assuming he didn't do too well. And uh, as they kind of move to the side for you, uh, a man walks up and he says, Ah, oh, well, howdy there. You interested in uh, trying your hand at a little axe throwing? Yeah, I am. All right, well, the object's in the name. You're going to take that axe, and and he gestures into his little safety tent, and you just see a red target painted on something. You can't really tell. It's like there's a box for the target that's clearly painted on something, and then the rest is just blackout. Okay. Well, there's two spaces, two targets. And uh, <clears throat> your objective is just to take one of my axes and get it into the target. All right. Okay. Uh, any other things I need to know about? Uh, I'll give you two throws. Okay. Uh, I'd recommend there are two techniques you can use. You can the underhand, which uh, for this distance be a little complicated. That says for, more for an experienced axe thrower. And uh, you got your overhand, which you just do over the head, two hands, and uh. release. And I think uh, I can walk you through it the first time. This is your first time axe throwing. Okay. Uh, that's fair. All right. So what we'll do, uh, step in the middle there, in between two targets, and I'll just let you throw one for free. Try it out. All right. All right. Uh, they're a little heavy, so I'm going to need you to roll a five or higher. See if you can okay. pick up the axe. All right. Just like the mallet. Ah, that's a one. So you go to pick up the axe by the head first. Just like, okay, let me pick up this blade here. And the man uh, puts his hand over you goes, whoa there. Grab it by the handle, please. Hmm. We, we might uh, we might limit it to one throw here. Hmm. So we'll give you a practice, and then if, if I'm uh, seeing more... Uh, Practice is needed. We might just uh, give you one and then have you move along. Okay, okay. You rolled a one. Did you? <laughs> I'm just saying. Did you call? I'm it? not. I'm trying to run a fun game. I don't want anyone in danger. It's no offense to you, stranger, but you did just try to grab the axe sharp end up. So, if anything, I'm a danger to myself. And I'm not trying to risk you getting hurt. <laughs> so, all right. Two hands. Grab it by the handle. Hold okay. it over your head, and you're going to kind of move it forward, get a momentum going. Don't let go it all the way back. Don't want you hitting yourself in the back. And on three, you just let it go down that corridor for me. Okay. Remember, aim between the two targets, and I'll give you your real throw at the end. All right. All right. So you do all that, and are you taking this seriously? Or are you going to? Hmm? This guy's kind of been a little demeaning. What are you... How are you going to handle this? What did you call? Huh. Oh. We're gonna, we're gonna do this serious first part. Okay, so just do a ten or higher for me. Okay. No reason you shouldn't be able to throw an axe. Fifteen. Okay, so you just throw and it just sails down the hallway and uh, hits the wall and then goes flat. Whatever he's got, the target painted on. It's not a uh, whatever. Ever back there, it feels like it hit a board. Something. Okay. Something that wasn't meant to be dug into. Mm. So he uh, 
he says. Well, all right. So we got a little bit of capability behind us that we weren't showing before. Maybe we weren't just playing around. Remember, axes are dangerous. They're serious tools. So, yeah. But you're showing me that you can handle yourself. So well, I'll go ahead and give you two throws. Okay. okay. So he uh, hands you the axe. He says, would you like a left or right target? Uh, I'd take the, the left target. Okay. So you're going to take the left Miss Sanders, <clears throat> ooh, that was bad. I was trying to do two voices. Uh, Miss Sanders, you going to be wanting to play? Um, what do you think? Should I give it a go? Yeah, sure. All right, well, if he's going to take the left, I'll take the right. All right. So you and Abigail are both standing at your two targets. You've got your axe, and she's got hers. You both get two throws. And she's going to let you go first since you're the guest. Okay. All right, best of luck to you. And same to you. Let's do... We said 10 or higher before. Yeah. I'm going to bump it up to a 15 since you're now trying to hit a target. Uh, as opposed to just chucking it. 13. 13? Okay, so with a 13, you're not quite making it. You get the distance, but you're not getting... It went a little too high, went over. Okay. So you just hear the thud again of it hitting whatever he's got back there to uh, stop it from going through the tent and just kind of falls. And uh, he says, oh, hate to see that, hate to see that. Miss hmm. Sanders, you want to go ahead and try with yours? And Abby gives it a throw, and she misses hers as well. Hmm. So she says, well, shucks, it looks to be a mite harder than... They make it out to be, huh? Truly. That's all right, the man says as he gets up from his stool and he walks over. He picks up both axes and brings it back to you. You both get another throw each. You want to stay at the same target? Yeah. All right. So you go ahead and roll again 15 higher. Gosh darn. One. One? Yeah. You throw it, and it just goes straight into the ground like a foot away from you. Darn. I don't know if you just held on to it too long or what, but it's just right into the ground. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's a, that's a might bit of misfortune you just stepped into there, friend. Yeah. Uh, does he does he get a duo? Or do you want to do mine? or? <sighs> I mean, I don't mind. It's all right. If you don't don't mind, I'll I'll do another one. Uh, yeah, sure. And she steps to the side here, and okay. gives you the opportunity. You step over to the right target this time. All right. And having faced that embarrassment, you still get a third attempt to throw this axe. Okay. Darn it! Fourteen. Fourteen. It's just shy of it. Uh, and it's just shy enough that the man walks over. He says, well, I don't got to walk too far for this one. He picks up your one and he hands it to you. And then he walks over, kind of lumber into the axe. This one's actually stuck in the wall, but it's just below uh, the uh, cutout square. So you just missed it. And he says, well... I feel bad for you. You had one uh, not so close and then one incredibly close. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll give you one more. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yep. You're after that prize ticket, aren't you? Yeah. You might want to be careful with that strength one. I see it poking out your pocket there. Mm -hmm. You got some mighty fierce people in this competition. They might be trying to take that ticket from you. So you call it anybody's... Coming from my ticket, I'm, I'm dunk on him. Dangerous thing to say with an axe in your hand. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he just steps back to his stool, safely over to the side where you won't hit him. Fifteen or higher. And which target are you aiming at? Uh, hmm. I, don't know. I, I gave the left one. Did you call it a few tries? So yep. Did you call him? I'm going to go for the left one again. Okay, so you're going back to the left one, your original target? Yeah. 15 or higher? Mm -hmm. Uh, 7. 7, it makes it halfway and then just kind of loses momentum, kind of tumbles to the floor. 
Ah, uh, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. All right. Okay. Well, mister, I tried for you. I really did. Yeah. I mean, you're welcome to come back, give another try later. I don't necessarily know if you're wanting to spend any more time axed on it. may not be uh, your field of expertise. I, I will come back later. Fair enough. I look forward to seeing you. Mm. Uh, four throws. Uh, Miss Sanders, I'm going uh, to need two tickets for that. And Abby reaches in her pocket and pulls out, out uh, these little orange tickets that you realize she's been paying this whole time. Ah. And she hands them to the man. She says, well, we thank you. It was definitely interesting. He says, all right, now, you take care. She says, you too, sir. Walks away. You think that was karma? No, it has to fire, Chief. Who's karma? Fair enough. Uh, let's... Let's go to another one. Uh, okay, you have the dunk tank bobbing for lettuce, the fishbowl throw, the shooting gallery, and the, well, karaoke still isn't going yet. You see a band either coming or going off stage or setting something up. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a two, uh, gosh darn, let's, let's do to the shooting gallery. Okay, so you go to the shooting gallery, you see five stools all uh, sitting out with a counter with uh, what look to be like plastic uh, revolvers. And rather than having a revolving uh, chamber, they have a tube going into the counter where whatever you're going to be shooting seems to be dispensing from, but it's off at the moment. The lights are off across the booth since no one's playing. Mm -hmm. And there's just the string of lights trying to bring people in, kind of arching above it. Well, howdy there. It's good to see you, says a uh, older woman who's running the shooting gallery. Mm -hmm. Y'all want to try your hands at a little bit of target shooting? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. All right, well, uh... It's going to be a ticket for each of you. And Abby uh, goes to her pocket, pulls out two more orange tickets. And she says, well, here you go, ma'am. The woman says, thank you, Abby, thank you. Uh, now, it's going to be, I assume you're after the prize ticket, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, to get the prize ticket, what you're going to do, you're going to have to keep shooting until you see the gauge fill all the way up. And then she flips a rather large switch, and the lights come on, and you see people. It looks like realistic people's faces. Hmm. They've got targets, caps kind of over their mouths. And it's just their heads kind of sticking out. So it looks like they've been almost put in stocks, but the rest of their body's covered if they work I mean they are incredibly realistic looking but they're not blinking or moving around so uh so question yes sir what can I do for you how'd you make make the little targets oh the little those little things there well the displays around them oh okay well the little targets are just a little plastic thing that we got off of the uh sarsaparilla caps at the general store you know mm -hmm. little target tops we just cut those out pretty easy huh now the people were uh made by oh gosh it's been years there used to be a man who lived in town that he would make models of different people's heads mm -hmm. and I, I can't remember his name it's been so long but he originally made this game and I came in and I took over it uh when he moseyed out of town, uh, oh, what was his name? Abby, you would have been too young to remember this guy. He, w he wouldn't have been on your radar, but... Well, shoot, I, I can't say I remember for certain, but he was one of them artsy types, so he put it together. Hmm. Okay. Uh, 
Would you mind letting me like get get the models of a film a bit? Uh, I'd prefer you didn't. They're mighty old. Hmm. I mean, I know that's saying something coming from someone old, as old as I am. She kind of grabs her wrinkled face and she says, I, I think we should leave them where they're at. I don't want them to break or come down. We don't got no way to put it back together. Wait, did you call it... Like, if they're super old, wouldn't you have, like, a backup? Like, we got what we got in front of us. He didn't make any spares. Oh, yeah. We can touch them up with paint every now and then, but if an ear breaks off, well... Then we just gotta make it look like that Vincent Van Gogh fella. Have, have you touched them up with paint? Well, it's been a couple of years. Hmm. You look and they're kind of faded. Okay. Where they used to have kind of color in the face. It looks like maybe they have rosy cheeks and like brighter eyes. They're just kind of faded, kind of worn. Alright. So, why people's faces as the targets like shouldn't you have like a bandit or something that feels less diabolical to shoot well you're not shooting bullets son you're uh you're just shooting the soda pop and she turns on the stream and you see uh, brown liquid fill up in the tube and you smell the distinct smell of cola in the air. And okay. It's not anything sinister, I assure you. I am a church-going woman. I wouldn't have anything malicious going on in my booth. That's fair. Okay. So. That being said, we have had several other customers show up at the time, so I'm going to go ahead and let the game start, if that's all right with you, sir. Fair, fair. If you don't feel as though you have the constitution to play, we can't have you step aside. However, I don't want to keep these younger folk waiting. All right, I'm finna dunk on this challenge. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> the way it's set up now, you have yourself and Abby sitting at the third and fourth table, or chair at the counter, rather. Mm -hmm. And then you have a small child sitting next to Abby, and you have a uh, teenage couple, I guess on a date, uh, sitting next to you on your left there. Uh, the way this is going to work, I'm going to have you roll one dice. I'm going to roll four. You have to beat my four in order to win the challenge. Okay. So, do you want to roll first or do you want to see your competition? Uh, hmm. Yeah, you roll first. Probably be better for, uh, what do you call it, suspense. Oh no! Oh no! What you call it? Backward to be better for suspense okay. purposes. You roll. Go for it. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, so they all got to roll higher than thirteen. So uh, we'll say the first teenager on your left, he's starting up, and he gets a seven. All right. So he's not going to be beating you. We'll figure out where he's placing. Uh, teenager to his right, he's going to sitting immediately to your left, seat two is going to roll a 10. So not beating your 13 either, maybe a close second. Uh, Abby is starting up, and she gets a three. So I think she's just there kind of to have the fun of it. And then the little kid sitting on the far right side gets a five. So the let me tell you how this plays out. The uh, game starts, the soda shirt starts uh, shooting out, and immediately you just aim for the target. And it's just go time. You're not moving from it. You're watching it like hit up the back of the mouth as you're consistently just getting soda down this uh, person's mouth and uh, watching your little gauge fill up as it goes. And as far as you can tell, it's like a container. So it's mm -hmm. like it's filling up and then it goes up in the very narrow, almost thermometer like container. And yours is just shooting up. Uh, one of the teenagers is getting close, like directly next to you, and he's kind of nudging you, kind of playing around. Nothing. Says so everybody's just kind of having fun, and uh, it's getting real close, and it's neck and neck. But then yours just shoots right past him and keeps going. It, it wasn't even close. Like uh, bell number th uh, three. You're at three. Yeah. So bell number three goes off, and uh, everybody just kind of claps. And, cheered and kind of says that it's, that was fun. The uh, couple breaks off. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, the little kid goes for a high five from uh, Abby and then goes for one for you. And what do you do? What did you call it? I'm going to go for the high five and then take it back and then point in his face and go, Take that! Been dunked on! The couple can come back too and they can get as well! I'll win this once more! And then I take the, the soda gun, I shoot it in the air, and I just let it rain down. Just like, Count Dunkula dunks on the challenge! Well, Abby, this this a new friend of yours, and Abby's just kind of like, uh, I don't, I don't know about all that now. Friends, a might strong word for this one. I'm sorry if you don't have the constitution to handle me. Let's go, Abby. <laughs> so, Abby walks away, kind of concerned at this point the little kid's upset so the old woman's left there trying to cheer him up uh as you're walking away the old woman hands abby the prize ticket and abby hands it to you it's another uh red ticket and it's just got a little uh soda gun shooting on it and it just says uh test of accuracy Mm. above it is there a bathroom around here? I'm soda really sticky. Well, uh, I reckon there's a porta potty uphill, but ah, uh, that's not gonna help. <laughs> no, no, I reckon not. You don't really think before you act, do you? Uh, secondary thing. Mm. Right. Well, we got three more games. Okay. We got the dunk tank. Uh, you can go over there, Bob, for lettuce, or we got the fishbowl throw. All right. Uh, I feel feel like I I have to get over the dunk tank at some point. Okay. Uh, so you're circling back around. As you're circling, you hear uh, or you see somebody throwing an axe, and it flies off into the black of the uh, tent, and you just hear a blood curdling scream come from inside, and you just hear the uh, man run it. You go, We got a winner! Yeah! And everybody starts cheering, and everybody's uh, high fiving the guy, patting him on the back, and you see him get a uh, dexterity ticket. Okay. So that's just something you see as you're walking past. Hey, Abby. Yep. Yeah. How realistic was that screen to you? What screen? Hmm. Concerning. Let's continue on to the dunk tank. <laughs> well, all right. And you walk over to the dunk tank, walking through the entirety of the Harvest Festival to come back to the dunk tank, and you see a different man standing there. Ah. Uh, he's or sitting there on the platform. And he says, Well, howdy, y'all. Hey. You thinking you're going to be able to take me on in this here dunk tank? Uh, and I was I was really feeling like I would be able to be nice on this one, but... Uh. I heard how you were at the <laughs> Axe Throne booth there. I'm just saying. A cat in his Everdeen, you are not, sir. Uh, okay. I'm going to talk on it. Okay! <laughs> We're going to have no friends at the end of this. I love it. So, Abby just kind of... Uh, okay. Pulls out a ticket, hands it uh, to the man through the cage, and he says, Well, alrighty, let's see what you got. I'll oh. tell you what. The other guy's going to give you three shots, I'll give you four. I reckon you're going to need it. Mm. Now, I got a line for kids if you want to stand at the kids' line. Okay. <laughs> okay? Uh, Alright. Well, Alright. Let's... Let's do this. Now you gotta throw beanbags if you stand at the kid line. Now you don't get the baseballs like the big boys. Mm. I I really hope it's not the secrets in, of the ooze in there, but I really <laughs> don't like you. <laughs> but you're gonna throw, throw baseballs like a big man and would you call it dunk your face in. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna give you tenor higher because I feel like you'd be motivated by this. Like, he's thoroughly made you mad enough. Twelve. First one, you throw it, you hear the ding, he goes down. 
and you see the splash of the green water shoot up. All right. And then you hear a hissing sound coming from the vet, and the man just starts screaming. And he's flailing his arms. He's grabbing for the cage that was earlier protecting him from the baseball, but he can't get a grip on it. And he just slips into the murky green water. And you see some bubbles, and then the bubbles just stop. Huh. And a shoe just floats up. And then sinks back down. Hey, Abby. Yeah? Did you see what just happened? Yeah, you got it in one. Congratulations. I don't... You, no, this... You're a real sore winner, you know that? You can just get the ticket, and a uh, ticket slides through a chute that's at the bottom of the dunk tank. And oh, no, a... this is not Count Dunky like talking. This is Jonathan, and... Well, I didn't realize the two were separate. I haven't met too much of Jonathan. Did you call it? I think... Just, just take your ticket so we can go already, all right? Okay. It's kind of stopped being a fun tour. Alrighty, fair. Uh, we're gonna take the ticket. And you pick up the ticket, and it's the dunk booth. It's a baseball being thrown at the target. And it just says at the top in the gold leaf, Test of Ruthlessness. <laughs> Thank you.